Hello. I know we normally talk about making films on this YouTube channel, but today we're going to talk about watching films. To watch films, you need a nice big screen, and that is the subject of this video, the LG NanoCell Series 9 TV. As I talked about in my video two weeks ago about the editing room, this has been a major upgrade to the editing studio room space. How it all happened was I started looking at 4K TVs, and I saw that you could get a pretty decent TV, or at least an all right 4K HDR TV for £500. Seems reasonable. So of course I looked around and found that well for 750 you get an even better TV, uh, for a thousand pounds you still get again a better TV, and well that's how I ended up buying a 1200 pound LG NanoCell Series 9. The one I'm talking about in particular is the SM9010 PLA, which is an exclusive to Curry's PC World, but I think there's an American equivalent. I looked at a few different size TVs, but in the end I decided on 55 inches, and I was a bit worried that I'd be missing out by not having a 65 inch TV, but looking at how it fits into the editing room, I think 55 inches was the right idea. Especially since I went and picked it up from the store, and I don't think I would have got a 65 inch TV in the car. As it was with the 55 inch one, I had to be like right up against the steering wheel, sort of hunched behind the wheel, could barely see. Well, I mean, I could, I could see where I was going, but it wasn't a comfortable trip home. But that's enough about the buying experience. On to the actual TV. So, what do you get for £1,200? Well, it's a 4K TV with HDR in multiple different formats. It has the standard HDR10, it also has HLG, it has the, whatever it is, Technicolor, HDR format, which I haven't really seen used anywhere, and it also has Dolby Vision. In fact, if you want the whole Dolby home theatre experience, this TV is very good for that because not only do you get Dolby Vision, you also get Dolby Atmos. The connectivity on this TV is good, you get an Ethernet port and you get four HDMI 2.1 ports. Now that's very nice because there aren't a lot of other TVs at this price range that get HDMI 2.1. Uh, HDMI 2.1 is good for higher resolutions, like 8K. I'm not sure how relevant that's going to be, but some more useful features are you get variable refresh rate displays, which is good for gaming. You can have 120 hertz 4K, which is also good for gaming. And my personal favorite feature is eARC. eARC is a really great feature if you want to get high quality audio, especially if you want to hook it up to a Dolby Atmos soundbar, which I do want to do in the future. Having said that, until I get a soundbar, the built-in speakers on the TV are surprisingly good. I don't feel like I'm missing out too badly. Obviously, internal speakers on a TV really aren't the best sound system and it's not the best way to experience the immersive audio of a film, but as far as built-in speakers go, I'm actually really impressed with them. The sound has a reasonably immersive feeling, and until I can afford a soundbar, because I've kind of spent all the budget on the TV, the built-in speakers will do. In terms of smart features compatibility, well, this TV does really well at that too. It supports Google Assistant and the whole Google smart home ecosystem, it supports Amazon Alexa, and this one is quite unusual. It supports Apple's HomeKit, which is nice. I don't have any Apple HomeKit stuff, and even though I am an Apple fan, I would use Alexa things, but it's good that you have the option. Alexa, turn on the TV. Okay. And then we have the remote. I really like the remote. I think it's very easy to use. It's actually Bluetooth, not infrared, like a lot of other remotes, which means you don't need a direct line of sight on the TV. So you don't end up waving it around like you're trying to Wingardium Leviosa of a TV. You can just use it normally. Although if you do like waving TV remotes around, then it functions a bit like a Wii remote pointer. So when you move it from side to side and up and down, you get a little cursor on screen, which you can control and click on. And I think that's a very good system. Now onto the most important part of a TV, the display. Now right away, we have something that's a bit unusual because this TV uses an IPS panel where the majority of other TVs 
use a VA panel. Now doing this, you are going to sacrifice a bit of contrast, but in exchange for that, you get much better viewing angles and it can help to get more accurate colors too. Onto the image quality. This is a little bit complicated because it's one of those products that does better in the real world than it does on a spec sheet or in benchmark tests. Now I quite like products like that, after all I'm a Canon user and an Apple user, but initially when I was looking around at TVs, I noticed that the Nano Cell wasn't scoring particularly high numbers on comparison sites like Artings, where it looked like it was losing out to the Samsung Q70 and the Sony Bravia XF9005. But I was a bit confused by this because I looked at some reviews from people who'd actually had the TV and watched stuff on it and they all really liked it, so I didn't know what to think about that. If we look at the Artings website, you can see where this falls short compared to the other TVs, or at least how it does in the benchmark, and that's essentially anything contrast based, so the contrast ratio, the black point for local dimming, and also the brightness. Now I have no doubt that these tests are all very accurate the way they were carried out and that the results were true, but I'm more interested in real world use. And in terms of brightness, while well, I was watching Pirates of the Caribbean on Netflix, it was a very black, dark scene, and then suddenly a ship just explodes out of nowhere. It was a really like blindingly bright light from the TV and I was thinking, yes, this is really good. I just sat there gleefully watching all the people being exploded and burnt to death. Um, yes, right, contrast. Now, contrast is the other area on artings where the TV is lacking, and unfortunately, some of that is true. It's just what's going to happen when you use an IPS panel instead of a VA panel. If you're in a pitch black room and you're watching a film that has black bars, unfortunately, you are going to see the black levels being a bit elevated over what they would be in a VA panel. There's just no real way to get around this. Having said that, I don't find it too distracting, and if I'm watching something where I've got lights on or during the daytime while I've got the curtains open, it's really not a problem at all. And in terms of the backlighting, I don't think that's too much of a problem. If you're looking at a motion graphic element like, say, the volume bar or like the Netflix logo, then you can see the local dimming zones. But actually watching stuff, especially if there's no black bars, I really haven't been distracted by the backlight dimming unless I've been really trying to look for it. So I wouldn't be put off too much by the backlight dimming or the brightness. The only real issue is the contrast level compared to a VA TV. In my opinion, this is where a TV like the Samsung Q70 is able to beat out the LG Nano Cell. It has better blacks because it's a VA panel, and overall I think the local dimming is just a bit more advanced. That's only me talking about the bad points and saying that they're not too bad. The good points of a TV, well, overall the image just looks really cinematic, and the colours, oh, they are so nice. Watching Dolby Vision content is just amazing. Everything works really well together to have just a really overall pleasing image. In fact, I nearly watched Blade Runner. I got about halfway through and then I got bored because it's really not my type of film. It's a sci-fi, but there aren't massive fight scenes or ship chases or some sort of gunfight. So I was sitting there going, hmm. but I managed to make it halfway through because of how beautiful it looked. Like that visually was a stunning film. I'm just not a big fan of particularly artistic films like Blade Runner. Needless to say, I did not do well in film studies A-level or at uni when we had the history or the theory and history of films. I'm not really an artistic person, I'm more sort of making films and explosions. That's kind of my thing. But after that little side rant, yeah, Dolby Vision, I think it was well worth buying a TV with Dolby Vision, which is one of the main reasons I didn't buy the Samsung Q70 because that doesn't support Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos. It does have HDR10+, but that's not really available from many sources. As far as I'm aware, you can get it from Amazon Prime Video and you can get it from some Blu-rays too. 
Whereas Dolby Vision is available on Netflix, especially Netflix Originals. It's going to be available later this year when Disney Plus comes out and you can get it from Blu-rays and lots of other sources too. I really can't wait to get a Dolby Atmos soundbar. The Dolby home cinema setup just sounds pretty cool. So on to my overall opinions of the TV and whether or not you should buy it. Well, if you're looking for a home cinema setup, so like pitch black room where contrast is really important, personally, I would get a Samsung Q70 instead of a NanoCell, or really my preferred option would be to spend a bit more money and get one of the LG OLED TVs. Having said that, if you're not after a dedicated home cinema display, I think the NanoCell is amazing, particularly this version. You can get a model that's a bit higher up in the 9 series that has better backlight dimming, but it's got more backlight dimming zones. Personally, I didn't think that was worth it for me because that was another three or four hundred pounds, but if you do have a bit more money, then it could be a worthwhile upgrade. In general, I'm really happy with the TV, I really like it, and if you are looking for a TV for some TV shows during the day, some films at night, bit of gaming, I think the LG NanoCell is well worth considering. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider leaving a like and subscribing so as not to miss any new videos. See you later.